Um, Nigel and I spoke. I, I came back. Oh, start from when I left you today. When I left you today, um, I asked Nigel to get something to eat because around the time I left, it was like two something. I wanted something. When I left you, I got there like two and two something. And I think it's lunch to serve that twelve to one. So that means that I technically came there an hour and change later. Okay. This goes back to show you the retaliation that I'm talking about. When I asked Nigel, I went straight to Nigel, Mr. Cristiani, and I said, Nigel, I would like to get a lunch. I just came back. I didn't want to tell him I've been here, but I said, I have an appointment with where I've been, and I don't really want to deal with your staff, because all the staff lady that worked with me, she only gave me a little juice and a sandwich was there, and I don't like dealing with her, because of her attitude. So I told Nigel, please ask your staff if I can get something to eat. He said, I'll look into it. He told me to wait in the cafeteria. He walked around and came back. There are no more lunches. I said, Nigel, lunch it was just over. And I know that I know that see this is a constant thing, even with them throwing the food out early just so I won't get food. It's like, come on. Right. You're you're stopping lunch early and you're have, even have another security guard help you throw out food and it means that means you're cutting lunch lunch short. A lunch is but I mean dinner. It's dinner's supposed to be an hour and I called in at six forty something, so you basically threw the food at, at seven fifteen. So from six thirty to seven thirty is lunch. Or is dinner. So that means that you intentionally did that. And staff, I mean, other clients witness. Even the guy up there, somebody told him, both of us, the guy that you saw me talking to, he's from there too. So from that, he with the um, when I asked for the food, he said they had none. Fine, I left after that, came back like around 9:40 something last night. Um, Mr. Davis, one of the guys in the video, you know, that was holding back for the employee, Antoine. He said, um, come up, he came up. Yeah, in the booth. He was in the booth last night when I came in. I, Nigel was outside in the front smoking a cigarette, and I walked past him and I went to, no, came into the check, called it to, before bed check before 10 o'clock. So Davis, Davis said, Mr. Palmer, come in and speak to him. He said, come in the office. He went in the back office. And then, actually, this is on YouTube, too, on my. Give me a minute, I'm sorry. Okay. No problem. So, um,. You know, I, I went in the office with him, so he said, um, he had this piece of paper he's reading, and this is a transfer from Opportunity House. Transfer? Yeah. So now, I asked him, I said, is that DHS transfer? He said, no, it's a transfer through Canberra. That's number one. Number two, he recorded the, co the conversation. He said he was timing the conversation, which he recorded the conversation. Right? With Mr. Davis present in the room. Number three, Nigel read the um, read to me. I denied I denied the transfer because what happens is that tomorrow's a holiday. And tomorrow's going to be a cold day. That's true. So the transfers are two day notices. You can't even do a transfer on a cold day like that. Transfer. I think there's a DHS rule saying that you cannot do transfers during extreme cold weather. So you gave me, and DHS will be closed tomorrow, possibly Friday. I don't know if they're going to be closed. I know you guys are, will be closed. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically doing this when you know the offices are going to be closed and you put in for a transfer on your part, not from DH DHS's part. So basically through Canva. So therefore, if I wanted to make any dispute for this, the office would be closed. And the transfers, he said I'll be transferred by Friday 11 something a.m. Did you say where? And then I asked him for that. Where would I be transferred to? Um, I don't know, but when that information is given you uh, given to me, I will um, let you know. So basically, you're on door transfer, and you know you're offering me transfer. And this is what this is the the the, the premises around the transfer. You're giving me a transfer for safety reasons, and that I can find better assistance in my housing and my you know personal. Yeah. yeah. So now safety. Now, if you're going to bring up safety, how am I threatened? How do I feel unsafe? Going back to something else that happened this morning now. <laughs> See, this is like a chain of things that's happening. In the letter that you, you um, that I sent to you, I sent to Ms. Otaki, that I sent to Christine, that letter I stated that there's somebody selling cigarettes in front of the building. And through him selling cigarettes, it's causing a lot of other... There's a women's shelter around the corner, and there's a lot of, like, beef, this and that. I've talked to my girlfriend or even the guys with guys, whatever it is. It's just about a lot of just for them, you know, buying a cigarette, hanging out, talking, gossiping, and then, you know, that mess up, right, in front of the building. And staff is in the, in the middle of it, too. Even Mr. Cristiani stays out there. And so now staff is smoking cigarettes outside with clients around the same, so it's like, and gossiping with clients, talking to clients oh, wow. in front of the building. So I have video of this. Okay. <laughs>
right? Even even administration is involved in this. So now, in the letter, now you feel, so this is where the retaliation comes in. I went downstairs, another client that I do speak to him, he said, oh, I come here, I need to speak to you. So I said, what happened? You know? So he said, and I got my breakfast and I came and he said, I said, what happened? So he said, um, I hear you up, you were putting clients on, on video outside smoking cigarettes. I said, excuse me? I said, who told you that? He said, oh, one of the staff, but he's like, oh, that's wrong, you are their video. I said, no, hold on. I said, first of all, and I pull out my phone, and I showed him all my YouTube videos. I said, do you see not one video on here with any client or even clients outside smoking? I said, the staff is doing that to you guys. And I even got that, that, that they said that um, that I told on, in the letter. I spoke to him before I left and came over here. I said, we need to speak. And he, they told him, because what happens is that staff is telling him that I, am, I um, told on him about sending cigarettes and put his name in the letter, which if you read that, you have a copy of it. No names of clients were ever mentioned. So now this is where the retaliation comes, I mean the retaliation and the fear for my safety because you're going to gossip the clients so they can come at me like, oh yeah, you're snitching on us, but no, that's not the case. And you don't do stuff like that. Now you're, this is what's causing the issue. So now if I'm retaliated against from a client, you can blame that client for retaliating against me and then I can get transferred to safety. That client can get arrested and kicked out and then everything is washed away. Isn't that a nice game? That's not a mind game and the manipulation. I don't play those games with administrators. So now you're gossiping with clients and you're telling clients bad information just so they can retaliate against me. Yeah, yeah this, is deep, this is why they don't like me there because I'm digging a deep hole for them that they already put in themselves into. And they're administrators. That's why I write letters and I'm on point of recording and posting because what else can I do? I've met with DHS administrator. I came here, so now I blow this up in the air. Who wants to complain about it, complain about it. Who wants to get sensitive, get sensitive. It's just the facts. I'm not putting anybody in a situation. They're putting themselves in this situation. If you don't want to do anything about it, how can I help that? But expose you. Now I expose you. You're upset. Now you want to transfer me. You want to do this. You want to gossip with all the clients and tell clients so they can come back at me. And I, and the, one, the reason why I don't fear for my my safety there, because every man I deal with there, even if you like me or not, I deal with you straight. And I tell them, you don't have to like me, but this is what it is. That's why I don't fear no one in there. So at the end of the day, I told them, you could tell that staff member, SMD. I was very clear on that in front of other staff members. Tell them that. Because they shouldn't be t- going back telling you bad information so that they could cause conflict in here. That's very unprofessional. And I, so I, I said, I said, now should I record you when you're telling me this? Because I know you don't want me to do that. I said, stop listening to, to, to staff. Because when I start recording clients and then you hear the gossip what staff is telling them, it's, it's going to be even worse. And I don't want to have to expose other clients with that. Mr. let me just jump in. Yeah, it's a sticky situation. Yeah, because there's not much we can do. I hate to say this, but normally the day before a holiday, DHS rarely picks up the phone. Like, there's not much we can do on that end. Mm-hmm. And my supervisor actually tried calling Dean today. He didn't pick up. Um, oh, about the situation? So? Separate, separate. Oh, separate. Situation. Oh. Yeah. Um, and it's sad that DHS doesn't even, even comply with the coalition is like we don't even have to answer to you if you don't want You're to. Sad, man. Even though we, even though the co- the homeless come here for help, right. they 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 just dismiss you guys. Like we come to you guys for help to to mediate what's going on between us, the HSO or the, or the shelter system. But yes, still they don't want to cooperate with you guys and they're doing what they feel like doing. I hate to say it, but they do have the power. You know, yeah, they do. Well, I understand. Guys, you I, know, I know, you're right? middleman. I understand right? how it works, yeah. Like, that sucks because it's like we can keep pushing, but at the end of the day, they have to kind of open the door and say, well, this is what we can do. And mm-hmm. I've known, I tell you, I've been here three years now, like advocating for clients. Sometimes they don't get back to three, four days later from mm-hmm. like a serious subject. And mm-hmm. it's, there's always something we can do. Like in this case, with the problem, there's not much I can tell you. You know, and I leave at one today, so there's only so much mm-hmm. advocacy I can even put in. So even, all right, the retaliation point of it. I see it. Yeah. I mean, it's blatant, and, and that that right. stuff can even get a lawsuit against them. But nobody wants to assist. I, I'm doing it this way first before I sort of try to find any other means. So, because this is like, I don't want them. I don't want them, everybody has to be held accountable, basically, for dismissing their these their actions and dismissing issues. Period. Yeah.
Period. Yeah. But any part you want to take it, want to take it, it's just, it has to be done because at the end of the day, this is a system, and honestly, people are stressed out in the shelter system. But these are the services you go online, you see it on Google. Come here, do this, do that, do that. But when you go through that whole list, everybody yeah, is like, <laughs> "Oh no, go speak to this one. Oh no, go over there and speak to that one. We can't help you. Talk to this one until that one to call me back. Well, this not right. gonna work." <laughs> No, I hear you. When I expose them, now, I was like, oh, why you do that? <laughs> Come on. Somebody told me I should work for the news way. I you dig into sure, people. Man. But, I, like, come on. <laughs> this is a system that, this, this is a shelter system. This is a system that, you know, people go through. So and wrong, so is the board event. And, I, and I've proven that, too. Like, I should have had videos. I don't videotape in schools. I, I've been through the board event twice. I've heard so. Twice. Hold on, how can I help you, man? I mean, something has to go with the transfers. It's just part of it. Well, I can't even. Well, I don't know if it's a definite. Are will they be doing a transfer or not? Because he I said he said it's optional. I will tell you this. Mm -hmm. it, it could be a bunch of scenarios. I've known clients when they tell them two days before mm -hmm. they get transferred on the day they're saying. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the transfer is like held for whatever reason, and they don't get transferred on the weekend. Maybe you're not even transferred. It can be a multiple. <coughs> well. As you see, the chance was done to cover up and for the retaliation part. Well, it's, easy, it's the easiest way to get rid of your issues. We talked about this. Yeah, right? of course. Like a week no, the, the first time you met me, you, and that's when you're surprised. Like, oh, you didn't get transferred yet? Yeah. But the reason why I didn't get transferred yet because of the issues, because of the way I handled it. Putting emails out there and actually putting something out there tangible that she can be held accountable for. So now when you want to up and transfer, it's like... I gotta take my time with this person before I can do that. Now, if you had a client that was like belligerent, rude, you could always call on the police on them. Oh, sure. And you want you to make complaints? Out of here. Easy to do that. But it's hard to do that if somebody's writing you emails, recording you, doing this, doing that, and putting you on front street. It's harder to do that to that kind of a person. That's why I tell people if you're in a system by yourself, you have to know how to defend yourself. Even you have to get grimy. Because these administrators and I've been through it. That's why I'm treating her the way I'm treating her. From past issues with other administrators and the lies they've told her and told the people she. When I've been threatened by DHS officers, so I've been assaulted in, in, in the shelter system. Yeah, in front of staff. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard thing to say, right? It's a hard thing that nobody has a rebuttal. Nobody can have a rebuttal for that. And the proof is there. So. Can I offer you something way off subject? Sure. Like a Coke. Are you okay. good with that? We, oh, a large one? You have a large one? Like yeah, large? You got a bunch of them. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm giving you an extra one because they're one small. Uh, or would you add a, a tighter fit? Oh, right, yeah, like a little fitted. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Oh. 